In the annals of Roman history, a resplendent era emerged like a phoenix from the ashes of turmoil and unrest. A period heralded as the pinnacle of imperial virtue, marked by a succession of rulers whose benevolence and wisdom earned them the epithet, the five good emperors. It was a time when the Roman Empire, bruised by the tumultuous Julio-Claudian dynasty, found solace under the judicious reigns of these enigmatic leaders. The name, Five Good Emperors, was not coined by a contemporary historian but rather resurrected by the astute Renaissance thinker, Niccolo Machiavelli. In his seminal work, The Discourses on Livy, Machiavelli bestowed this title upon a collective era spanning from the late 1st century to the early 2nd century AD. It encapsulated a period that, in his eyes, stood out as an exception to the Machiavellian norm of power politics, marked by stability, wisdom, and a commitment to the common good. Before this golden age, Rome had weathered storms of tyranny, corruption, and chaos under emperors whose names now invoke shudders and disdain. The excesses of Nero and the power struggles of Caligula cast a shadow over the city of Rome. The empire, battered by a series of erratic rulers, yearned for a time of stability and principled governance. Enter the era of the Five Good Emperors, a period extending from the reign of Nerva to the final days of the Antonine dynasty. What set these emperors apart was their dedication to principles of justice, administrative competence, and a genuine concern for the welfare of their subjects. The concept of virtuous leadership, espoused by these rulers, was a stark departure from the autocratic whims of their predecessors. In comparing the era to what came before, it becomes evident that the five good emperors brought a breath of fresh air to the Roman Empire. They sought to rectify the excesses of earlier rulers, implementing policies that aimed at balancing power and ensuring a more equitable distribution of resources. Their commitment to fairness and justice was a balm for a society scarred by the arbitrary cruelty of despotic leaders. However, as history often oscillates between peaks and troughs, the age of the five good emperors was not to last forever. The shadows of decline loomed on the horizon, waiting to cast their pall over the serenity that had been achieved. Part 2 will delve into the lives and reigns of these enigmatic leaders, exploring the legacy they left etched in the annals of Roman history. The year was 96 CE, and the Roman Empire stood at a crossroads. The echoes of past tumult still reverberated through the corridors of power, casting a shadow over the imperial throne. It was against this backdrop that Marcus Coxius Nerva ascended to the position of emperor, marking the commencement of the illustrious era of the Five Good Emperors. Before Nerva's time, the empire had weathered the tempestuous rule of Domitian, a despot whose reign was characterized by tyranny and extravagance. The Senate and the people bore the weight of a ruler whose capricious whims and disdain for tradition had left the Roman state teetering on the brink of chaos. The assassination of Domitian, in 96 CE, paved the way for Nerva, a seasoned statesman and a respected member of the Roman aristocracy, to assume the mantle of leadership. Nerva's reign was not marked by conquests on the battlefield but by a shrewd and pragmatic approach to governance. Understanding the need to mend the fractures within the Roman state, he immediately set about rectifying the excesses of his predecessor. One of his first acts was to release those who had been unjustly imprisoned during Domitian's rule, earning him the goodwill of the people and the Senate. To further solidify his reign, Nerva adopted a conciliatory stance towards the Senate, a stark departure from Domitian's confrontational attitude. He sought collaboration with the Senate, signaling a return to the principles of the Roman Republic. Nerva's leadership style emphasized consultation and consensus building, fostering a sense of unity that had been sorely lacking in the preceding years. One of Nerva's most significant acts was the establishment of the Nerva Antonine dynasty. Realizing the fragility of his own line, he adopted a pragmatic approach by naming Marcus Ulpius Trajan as his successor, an act that laid the foundation for a period of continuity and stability. This adoption marked a departure from the hereditary principle that had often led to incompetent rule, showcasing Nerva's commitment to the welfare of the empire over personal considerations. The mood of the empire during Nerva's reign underwent a palpable transformation. From the oppressive air of Domitian's tyranny emerged a sense of relief and optimism. Nerva's commitment to justice and his willingness to correct the wrongs of the past endeared him to the populace. The people, long yearning for a leader who prioritized the well-being of the state over personal indulgence, found solace in Nerva's judicious governance. As Nerva's reign drew to a close in 98 CE, the Roman Empire stood on the precipice of a new era. The foundations laid by this wise and pragmatic ruler would be built upon by his successor, Trajan, as the torch of virtuous leadership passed from one capable hand to another. 
In part 3, we shall explore the reign of Trajan and the continued ascent of the Roman Empire's Golden Age. With the passing of Nerva, the Roman Empire found itself in the capable hands of Marcus Ulpius Trajan, a man destined to carve his name into the annals of history. Trajan's reign, spanning from 98 to 117 CE, marked a zenith of Roman power, expansion, and benevolent governance, further solidifying the legacy of the five good emperors. Before Trajan's ascension, the Roman Empire, while experiencing a reprieve from the tyranny of Domitian under Nerva, still faced challenges. The frontiers were often under threat, and internal stability remained a paramount concern. Trajan, however, was poised to not only maintain the tranquility established by his predecessor but to propel the Roman Empire to new heights. One of Trajan's defining features was his military prowess. Under his strategic command, the Roman legions achieved remarkable successes, expanding the empire to its greatest territorial extent. Trajan's conquests included the annexation of Dacia, a rich and strategic region north of the Danube, and the capture of the ancient city of Petra, securing Roman dominance in the eastern provinces. The spoils from these campaigns enriched Rome's coffers and enhanced its prestige. Trajan's leadership style mirrored his military acumen, decisive, yet fair. He was revered by the legions for his hands-on approach, often sharing the hardships of the soldiers in the field. This endeared him to the military, a crucial element in maintaining stability during an era when the loyalty of the legions could determine the fate of an emperor. While Trajan's military exploits defined his reign, he was also committed to the well-being of the empire's citizens. His extensive public works projects aimed at improving infrastructure and public spaces showcased a dedication to the prosperity and comfort of Rome's inhabitants. Trajan's Forum, a monumental complex in Rome, stands as a testament to his commitment to urban development. The mood of the empire during Trajan's rule reflected a sense of triumph and pride. The citizens basked in the glory of military victories and reveled in the prosperity brought about by Trajan's wise governance. The Senate, too, enjoyed a newfound relevance, as Trajan maintained a collaborative relationship with the Roman aristocracy. Trajan's untimely death in 117 CE marked the end of an era, but his legacy endured. His successor, Hadrian, faced the daunting task of maintaining the territorial gains while addressing the challenges of governance. As we delve into part 4, the spotlight turns to Hadrian and the delicate balance he struck to perpetuate the age of the five good emperors. As Trajan's military triumphs echoed across the Roman Empire, Hadrian ascended to the imperial throne in 117 CE inheriting both the vast territories conquered by his predecessor and the responsibility to navigate the challenges of governance. Hadrian's reign, spanning until 138 CE, would be characterized by a delicate balancing act between consolidation and expansion, solidifying the principles of the five good emperors. Before Hadrian, the Roman Empire stood at the pinnacle of territorial expanse, a result of Trajan's successful military campaigns. However, the challenges of managing such an extensive domain loomed large. Hadrian recognized the need to consolidate the gains made by Trajan, understanding that an overstretched empire could be vulnerable to internal strife and external threats. In a pivotal move that showcased both pragmatism and an understanding of imperial limitations, Hadrian made the decision to abandon certain territorial acquisitions in the east. The provinces of Mesopotamia and Assyria, conquered by Trajan, were relinquished. This strategic withdrawal demonstrated Hadrian's commitment to a sustainable and defensible empire, rather than one stretched to the brink of overextension. Hadrian's approach to governance extended beyond military matters. He was an emperor deeply concerned with the welfare of his subjects, fostering a sense of unity and loyalty. Unlike his predecessor Trajan, Hadrian was not primarily a military commander, instead, he focused on administrative efficiency and the well-being of the citizenry. His extensive travels throughout the empire allowed him to assess local conditions, implement reforms, and ensure justice was meted out fairly. A notable aspect of Hadrian's rule was his passion for architecture and urban planning. The construction of the famous Hadrian's Wall in Britannia, a colossal defensive fortification, served not only as a testament to Roman engineering but also as a practical means of securing the northern frontier. Hadrian's villa in Tivoli and the Pantheon in Rome, both architectural marvels, reflected his commitment to the beautification of the empire. The mood during Hadrian's reign was one of measured stability and cultural flourishing. The citizens, though witnessing the retrenchment of certain territories, appreciated the emperor's focus on consolidating the empire's strength. 
The Senate, too, found itself playing a significant role in advising the emperor, as Hadrian sought collaboration and consultation. As Hadrian's health declined, he faced the challenge of ensuring a smooth transition of power. His adoption of Antoninus Pius as his successor marked a continuation of the principled leadership that had defined the era of the five good emperors. In part five, we delve into the reign of Antoninus Pius and the enduring commitment to virtue that characterized this remarkable period in Roman history. With the passing of Hadrian, the mantle of leadership fell upon the shoulders of Antoninus Pius, a man known for his adherence to tradition, stability, and the preservation of the Pax Romana. Antoninus Pius's reign, spanning from 138 to 161 CE, would further solidify the principles of the five good emperors, ushering in an era of tranquility and prosperity for the Roman Empire. Before Antoninus Pius, the Roman Empire had experienced a period of relative stability under the prudent governance of Hadrian. However, challenges persisted, both internally and externally. Antoninus Pius recognized the need to maintain the delicate balance established by his predecessors, ensuring continuity and the preservation of imperial virtue. One of Antoninus Pius's most notable achievements was his commitment to upholding the rule of law and justice. Unlike some of his predecessors, who wielded power with an iron fist, Antoninus Pius governed with a gentle hand, emphasizing the importance of fairness and equity. His reign was marked by a decrease in state-sponsored violence and an emphasis on resolving disputes through legal means. Under Antoninus Pius's rule, the Roman Empire enjoyed a period of economic prosperity and cultural flourishing. Trade routes were expanded, fostering commerce and exchange across the empire. The construction of public works projects, such as roads, bridges, and aqueducts, further facilitated connectivity and development. The empire's cities thrived, adorned with temples, theatres, and forums, showcasing the grandeur of Roman civilization. Antoninus Pius's leadership style was characterized by a commitment to consensus building and consultation. He maintained a harmonious relationship with the Senate, seeking their advice and counsel on matters of governance. This collaborative approach earned him the respect and admiration of the Roman aristocracy, further strengthening the bonds of unity within the empire. The mood during Antoninus Pius's reign was one of relative tranquility and contentment. The citizens of Rome, weary of conflict and upheaval, welcomed the stability and prosperity that characterized his rule. The Senate, too, found itself playing a significant role in shaping imperial policy, as Antoninus Pius valued their expertise and counsel. As Antoninus Pius's reign drew to a close, the Roman Empire stood as a beacon of civilization and order in a world fraught with uncertainty. His adoption of Marcus Aurelius as his successor ensured the continuation of principled leadership, perpetuating the legacy of the five good emperors. In part six, we shall explore the reign of Marcus Aurelius and the challenges that would test the resilience of Roman virtue. As Antoninus Pius breathed his last in 161 CE, the responsibility of sustaining the legacy of the five good emperors fell upon his adopted son, Marcus Aurelius. The Stoic philosopher emperor, who would rule until 180 CE, faced the daunting task of navigating the Roman Empire through challenges that tested the very fabric of virtue. Before Marcus Aurelius, the Roman Empire had experienced a period of relative stability under the prudent governance of Antoninus Pius. However, as the Stoic philosopher assumed the throne, external threats and internal unrest would put the principles of the five good emperors to the ultimate test. Marcus Aurelius, a man deeply influenced by Stoic philosophy, approached the responsibilities of rulership with a commitment to justice, wisdom, and self-discipline. His reign coincided with a series of military conflicts, most notably the Marcomannic Wars against Germanic and Sarmatian tribes. While his predecessor, Antoninus Pius, had maintained a policy of defense, Marcus Aurelius found himself compelled to confront external threats. The Stoic trials of Marcus Aurelius were not limited to the battlefield. His reign witnessed the outbreak of the Antonine Plague, a pandemic that ravaged the Roman Empire and took a toll on its population. The emperor, faced with the dual challenges of military campaigns and a deadly pandemic, exemplified the Stoic virtues of resilience, self-discipline, and moral fortitude. Despite the challenges, Marcus Aurelius continued the tradition of principled leadership established by the five good emperors. He ruled with a sense of duty and a commitment to the well-being of the Roman people. His Meditations, a series of personal writings reflecting on Stoic philosophy, 
revealed the inner struggles of a leader grappling with the complexities of power, virtue, and the transient nature of life. The mood during Marcus Aurelius's reign was one of solemnity and introspection. The Roman people, resilient in the face of adversity, admired their philosopher-emperor's unwavering commitment to the principles of virtue. The Stoic philosophy that permeated Marcus Aurelius's rule became a guiding light for Romans navigating the challenges of a world in flux. As Marcus Aurelius neared the end of his life, the stage was set for the final act of the Five Good Emperors. His choice of Commodus, his son, a successor would mark a departure from the tradition of adopting capable heirs. The challenges that ensued in the wake of Commodus's rule would cast a shadow over the achievements of the Five Good Emperors. In Part 7, we explore the denouement of this remarkable era and reflect on the enduring legacy of virtuous governance in the annals of Roman history. As the Roman Empire entered the late 2nd century, the legacy of the five good emperors faced its greatest trial with the ascension of Commodus, the biological son of Marcus Aurelius. His rule from 180 to 192 CE marked a departure from the principled governance that had characterized the era, casting shadows of decline over the Roman Empire. Before Commodus, the Roman Empire had weathered external threats, pandemics, and the challenges of Stoic introspection under Marcus Aurelius. However, the virtues upheld by the five good emperors now seemed distant as Commodus's reign unfolded. His rule was marked by extravagance, corruption, and a departure from the Stoic principles that had guided his predecessors. Commodus, unlike the adoptive emperors before him, inherited power through blood rather than merit. His reign was marked by a self-indulgent pursuit of personal pleasure, leading to a stark contrast with the virtue-based governance of the past. The Senate, once a collaborative force in imperial decision-making, found itself marginalized as Commodus centralized power around his whims and desires. The mood of the empire during Commodus's rule shifted from the solemn resilience of Marcus Aurelius's era to one of disillusionment and anxiety. The Roman people, accustomed to the principled leadership of the five good emperors, now witnessed a decline in moral integrity at the highest echelons of power. The once mighty Roman state began to show signs of decay. Commodus's penchant for self-aggrandizement reached its peak with his declaration as the reincarnation of Hercules, complete with gladiatorial contests where he himself participated. Such displays of grandiosity further alienated the ruling class and the populace, eroding the respect for the emperor and the principles that had once guided the empire. The decline set in motion during Commodus's reign would continue into the 3rd century, marked by a succession of short-lived and often incompetent rulers, civil strife, and external invasions. The era of the five good emperors became a distant memory as the Roman Empire grappled with the challenges that ultimately led to its fragmentation and decline. In retrospect, the age of the five good emperors stands as a unique chapter in Roman history. The virtues of prudence, justice, and self-discipline, upheld by leaders like Nerva, Trajan, Hadrian, Antoninus Pius, and Marcus Aurelius, provided a brief respite from the tumultuous nature of imperial power. While their legacy faced challenges and ultimately succumbed to the forces of decline, the ideals of virtuous governance continue to inspire reflections on leadership and governance in the corridors of history. If you enjoyed this video on the five good emperors, stay tuned for my related video Roman Virtue and Modern America, as well as my video on Stoicism in the Roman Empire, coming soon. Thank you for watching. My channel, the Renaissance spirit is dedicated to the pursuits of a just, equitable, and humanitarian world. Video topics encompass areas including the history, politics, religion, personal development, society, culture, social and environmental justice and other topics of liberal arts and sciences including ancient Rome and the Roman Empire, which is a great comparison and contrast of the modern world. Topics perfect for the true modern polymath. The Renaissance ushered in a golden age in the pursuit of knowledge, knowledge both lost to time and yet to be discovered. It gave birth to the Enlightenment and the Age of Reason. Embracing truth, knowledge, and an understanding and compassion for humanity opens up the world to each of us individually and improves all of humanity, affording us the opportunity to be better stewards of the earth and to each other. The Renaissance spirit, more than just a philosophy or style, but a style for living, learning, growing and thinking. Please subscribe, turn on notifications, and share. If you're looking to explore and experience what life has to offer, I'm sure you'll enjoy the other videos on my channel. Please peruse my video library, and let me know in the comments what you get out of them and what other videos you'd like to see. But first, 
please take the quiz next to see if you're a renaissance spirit. Live the renaissance spirit.